52 Joint Studios presents episode four, Ross Morgan. All right. Yeah, man, this is six spots. So we were just talking about our hot take five. <laughs> Starting the show off. We got Ross here, or what do you like to be called? I see you got your rap. <laughs> nah, the rap name. No, no, not the rap name. That's just a, that's just a joke. That's just a character, basically. No, yeah, I'm Ross. <laughs> Just Ross, man. You've been having quite a few uh, people uh, interviewed on your uh, podcast. Got some big names there. Uh, I, don't I, know about, I don't know about big names. <laughs> dude from the bird pipe. Uh, a, a guy from the bird pipe, yeah. not a dude from the bird pipe. A, 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 a couple of guys. Yeah, we had the, the original uh, guitarist. You know, I'm a big fan of. I'm a, kind of a big bird pipe fan. Heck yeah, heck yeah. Uh, the original guitarist, and then also the uh, current guitarist. From that band, they both come on. So and the bassist too, who is uh, who has been at a bunch of different bands and shit. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys. Uh, well, when you're that good, you're sure you're playing in a few. But. Right. Well, yeah. Those guys, and it's all man. It's such a small scene, especially with you know they're like ten years older than me or so. So like you know they kind of all got their scene. It was very you know yeah 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 revolving you know kind of thing. So. Yeah. But yeah, I mean like those are some of the bands that I grew up listening to when I was a kid. So like for me, it's like I'm trying to be like get these guys on like i want to hear about like how they made these records and also just like be friends with these dudes because like i got fucking mad respect for them you know? yeah, yeah 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 the bird pipe i was a big fan yeah. back in the day enough of me i want to hear more about you <laughs> yeah man who um, makes ross tick yeah uh, I guess basically I've been doing. still married. No, uh, no, but both my parents have passed away. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Yeah, that's okay, dude. Yeah, well, I uh, lost my mom actually when I was like 13. Uh, and then actually my dad just passed away almost about exactly a year ago. So, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's yeah. okay, man. Yeah, that's how it is. So. Yeah. yeah, so that's what's going on there. Uh, I'm married. Uh, my wife's an awesome artist. How long you been married? Uh, married like six I'll years or something. Make it look like you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, right uh, yeah, uh, we've been together like fifteen years though. So yeah. uh, I started playing uh, the guitar in fifth grade. Okay. You know, whenever, shortly thereafter, drums in sixth grade, and I mean, pretty much since then, it's just been like obsessed with music in every kind of way. Yeah. You know, so nowadays I'm mostly a singer. Started singing like in high school and trying to, you know, put bands together and shit like everybody does. I've ever playing mm -hmm. fucking Weezer songs and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, would you do try and do uh, covers? Or yeah, I mean, like, then stuff. I've always been basically like an original artist, but it's more or less, you know, I probably joined my first like truly original band that I was kind of like uh, the leader of, I guess, or something uh, when I was like eight. Or just out of high school, so basically ever since then it's been really for me all original music. So I'm kind of, for better or for worse, an original artist, you know. Mm -hmm. So which doesn't exactly pay the bills, which doesn't exactly get you a lot of gigs, you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's just kind of what I'm interested in, you know. Heck yeah, so. yeah. How many albums would you say? Or I mean, total or out of that, out of the new place? Let's or? go total. Total. I mean. Uh, myself personally as an artist, I mean, there's like full length albums. There's probably five, six, seven of those something, you know, lots of like EPs and singles and oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, shit like that through the years. So there's, a you know, been a lot of different projects and whatever, you know, so yeah, probably, you know, five or six full length albums, five, six, seven EPs, you know. Couple dozen singles, something like that. You know, now that you personally are doing for yeah. other people. That's me. That's me as an artist. Oh, okay. and then, um, well, I mean, most of the stuff I do is for me as an artist, and then that's how I got into then trying to record other people and doing some stuff for other people or whatever. So I'm doing more of that now at the new spot. Now that there's like one of the other biggest things, dude, is like having a space to record drums is something that it's either like you got to pay big bucks and go to like a big studio like a, a commercial studio mm -hmm. or you don't have anything there's nothing like in the middle mm -hmm. and that's kind of what i was trying to make where like it's like a room that's big enough and good enough that you can record drums and have like a live tracking room but it's not like having to go pay you know lock out a space for 12 hours and pay you know three thousand dollars to track for the day or, oh, you know, 
Potentially. Depends on yeah. the studio and who's doing it and whatever. But, yeah, I mean, it can be a lot, you know, and where it is. Maybe not quite that right here in Grand Rapids. I don't even know. Just what I mean. drums. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, for whatever you want, but that's what most people would do is go in and, like, do the drums because that's the hardest thing to do. Like, yeah. you got to have the space and all the microphones and all the microphone preamps and everything. Yeah. So that's the hard one. I mean, doing guitars and stuff now, like, everybody can kind of do that just in their home studio in their bedroom, yeah. you know. A lot of people don't even use amps. They're just using the fucking axe effects things yeah. and whatever which is fine you know yeah. so it's kind of like and then the other thing they'll do a lot of time is go back to a, a big studio and do the vocals because those are kind of the two hardest like acoustic things yeah. you know like keyboards are all like in the in the box you know just yeah. like in the computer you know a lot of the time and stuff so like everybody can kind of do that stuff with a laptop in their bedroom now so like yeah. but doing drums is still like the hardest thing yeah you know? that's, that's why i finally just went out and purchased that the e -kit. oh i fuck with the e-kit i don't know did i have mine set up when you were over there uh i don't think you even just fired it up no. yeah the double kick yeah yeah big EK fan I mean I've done again when we didn't have room to do legit drums you know and we would use an EK we were kind of early in that thing of just using like full uh it was one of the software like it is now really first started coming out where you could really like all the, uh, you know do like a full drum set it sounded pretty real I mean now it's maybe not as real you know as uh because everybody's kind of used to it but it was better than you know what we could do you yeah, know, yeah. And people also don't care. The only people that care are nerds like me about yeah. music. You know what I mean? Like if it's a good song, like nobody cares. Yeah. You know? so it's hard now. Like it's hard for me to like, and I, I, I still do like some bands or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's they're just kind of like you know you and another guy or a couple people. You know, like trying to find like a band at forty is like pretty much impossible you know i mean maybe like in like la or nashville or something where there's tons of players you know but like around here every, you know most people live here they're either already doing something most of them probably doing a cover band because they get paid yeah. you know or they're completely out of the game <laughs> not worried about it anymore or nothing yeah, you know yeah. so but i just do it because i love it i mean yeah, like yeah. I, I'm, I'm just a advanced hobbyist you might say <laughs> yeah. you know so i don't even do that for a living i do other stuff for a living but yeah, I still love it though. It's yeah. an obsession. The gear, I'm just fucking obsessed with gear. You ever been to a Motor City guitar in Detroit? Mm -hmm. Dude, that place is, that's my favorite music store. Okay. It's just like stacks of old, you know, old gear, new gear. You know, it's not like Guitar Center where it's, it's like an old school mom and pop music store where there's just kind of like oh, really? stuff everywhere, but it's huge, you know? Yeah. I mean, they got all the killer guitars behind the counter, you know? Five thousand dollar Les Pauls and shit. It's really rare that you hear anybody that ever makes any money. <laughs> oh no, yeah, no, it's no, it's about spending money. For you sure. see, there was actually money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. More money than you made. How much more people are you doing? And how yeah. Much? Well, I mean, you know, you can't really sell records anymore. You know, that was the model I grew up on was the CD. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can't really do that anymore. You know, and now it's just like. Not like that. <laughs> it's just all yeah. singles. Right? Well, it's all right. singles and just freaking, you know, streaming and, mm -hmm. you know, like, you can just call up any album at any time. Like, you don't need to buy any kind of album or anything anymore. Yeah. So. Which is then weird, too, i say, because now the kid, he's in the albums. Yeah, it's coming back around. It's yeah, wild, it's right? Weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's because people are sick of, like... They want something tangible, dude. They want to hold that record, yeah, it, hold that book, or whatever. It's the deal with the skull. Yeah, it's an ashtray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you paint that shit? No. Or just bottle it? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of my background as a musician, I guess. Now, so, how'd you get into the, the rap aspect? Yeah, that was, uh, which is, it's, I mean, it's totally a joke, but that was good fun too like when we were fucking around in bands back in the day dude like we would do we like we had the joke rap group back then when we were kids called the tidy whities you know it's like my brother's friends and then uh 
later on when I was uh, doing a band called Holloway, my guitarist and I, like he was into hip hop a lot too, so we would fuck around with that too. So then the uh, just sort of recently, I actually what it was is I bought a MIDI controller, just like one of those like super simple, just like, like a four by four, like sixteen thing MIDI controller for doing. And I was like, ah, I should like. I got this thing. I guess I kind of got to make like a rap song now. <laughs> okay. And so I did. And then uh, from there, it was just like, we just thought it was hilarious. So I just made like, uh, I think like five more. And it was like, just trying to be like, what's every cliche from like Snoop Dogg rap kind of shit, you know, like what's the, here's the, whatever, here's the uh, murder song. You know, like, yeah, yeah. so it was like each one was just kind of like every cliche, what raps. And then, of course, it's just me. Like, it's so just preposterous. It just it's just me wearing ridiculous shit, looking like an idiot, you yeah. know. And then, uh, and track like, suits and. Yeah, and maybe you saw the bucket hat and yeah. like just fake gold and, the, and just like just being an idiot. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, Matt there from my podcast too. He he got in on that a little bit, and we did a few things or whatever. So then, but well, hopefully I'll be able to get to do some more at some point, you know. But that that kind of ran its course a little bit. Uh, now I'm working on more serious music again, you know. Okay. Kind of in the uh, more like rock, industrial, pop kind of vein or whatever. So it's kind of like you try to did, finish that. Did the uh, like a rap like a Limp Bizkit type of. Not really. We never did. Nah, man. Maybe that's what we should do next. Is do like a new metal throwback. Like that shit's coming back, man. Yeah. Freaking uh, Limp Biscuits all over the place and shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Little new metal things like coming back around. It's that cycle, dude. It's like what is it, a twenty-five year cycle or something? Everything just kind of like yeah. comes back around. So. Fuck no, I lost my train of thought. What are we talking about? Uh, you're going to make music now, serious stuff. Or? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's the. It's just kind of like. I'll do kind of like one project and kind of do that and then I'll kind of be sick of it and then I'll go do like something else, yeah. which is not probably the best thing to do because you're not really putting shit out consistently in one, but it's like, eh, I think I'll do a comedy rap thing or I think I'll do a progressive rock thing or I think I'll do a pop thing or I think I'll do and just kind of like, whatever's fun, man. I don't want to do it if it's not fun. Just whatever I'm inspired yeah. to do right now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had more time I could finish things like faster, you know, because I, I start to get bored with the own my own project, you know, like, yeah. oh, now it's been a few months, I'm still working on it, I'm still working on it, and I'm like, man, if I could just, like, bang it out, you know. See, but, now, do you think what holds you up sometimes is being too knowledgeable? No, it's, you just kind of, like, Can that's you actually kind of like an art, art piece where you're trying to... Yeah, oh, okay. yes. Well, if you, if you more, just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just let it go. People just, you do just it. gotta let it go. You do just gotta let it go. Yeah, there's that aspect to it, and it's also, like, you kind of, like, we were talking about this with, I don't even remember on my show the other day about how we were, like, about how, like, uh, you got to try to, like, stay with that feeling of what you were thinking when you were first inspired to do it, mm -hmm. to do the song, and, like, that eventually, like, kind of goes away, and then you kind of, it's been, you kind of lose the intention of what maybe you were trying to do, and I think that's what they were talking about was, they were saying, like, John Lennon told this to George Harrison that like when you start a song like stay on it until it's done mm -hmm. you know okay. and you know that's great advice we don't all have that luxury to do that you know so like after a while you start to kind of like lose like well maybe what you were thinking or like or I'll demo a vocal and then write like a, more songs for that project or if it's a full length record it's even longer and then like then like you gotta kind of like come back and be like what was I what was this you know sometimes that could be good because sometimes you can kind of be like ah that actually kind of sucked you know but yeah a lot of times he's just trying to get back into like whatever headspace you were in when you were demoing that stuff can be difficult yeah, to, I hear you, man. You know, so. now, how, <laughs> how do you go about your writing process is it always the same where you come out with like guitar riff no, so yeah, uh, the vocals or that's a great question because it's actually very project dependent. Okay. So, like when I was doing like the progressive rock thing, kind of like a Metallica tool, like mm -hmm. kind of thing, uh, that would all start like on the guitar. So, that was all very much like a guitar riff based thing. Okay. 
then part of the reason some of the other stuff kind of happened was because I kind of actually just got bored with that. And so I was like, well, I need to start songs in a totally different way. So I would start on like keyboards, which I don't really like, I don't play piano. So it's like synthesizers, like, okay, what can I make this do? I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not thinking about key. I'm not thinking about, you know, so it's more just like, you know, let's make this make some noise and start working with that. And then if I want to bring in guitar after that, like it's like a different starting point. So it puts you in a very different, cause like on a guitar, most of the time, you know, in, in rock, you're all, you're always going to go to like A and E and D. Like most of those songs are all in the same key, right? right? So like to try to do something different even is just like not what most guitars do. I mean, if you're great and you really do that, you can't, no problem. But it's just like, honestly, most rock and roll songs are all in the same kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know? So like just trying to like put yourself in a different, now I like to like, uh, I really like just starting with rhythm too so like whether that's playing something on the drums however that happens you need to play something on the real drums you can play something on an e-kit you can program something in you can do it in the box you can use a uh, like a sequencer or whatever but like just starting with rhythm and mm-hmm. trying to like make that kind of hit in a way and yeah. then being like okay well i know that this feels good you know mm-hmm. and then you can just start kind of building up from there just simple stuff chord sequences or yeah. whatever so yeah it depends on the project then there was another thing i did that was like well this is only going to be acoustic instruments meaning like no electronic keyboards or anything like it if it was going to be on there it had to be real like you know miked so okay drums a lot of acoustic guitar cello we had a, like a guy play cello i had a guy play sax we uh recorded a little string thing a little string quartet kind of thing or whatever mm-hmm. Just like kind of, well, even like an electric guitar too, but you know, like electric guitar, like through an amp, like mic'd up, you know. Right. Like, so just trying to make it be like organic, yeah. you know. So, so yeah, it kind of depends on the project of how you would want to like approach something. And that's part of the fun of it too, is being like, okay, well this, I'm going to do something this way or that way or whatever. And that will get you a different result. Yeah, you know? for sure. Where, yeah. yeah. When there's drones, you get that, like, there's a tempo. Like, everybody's kind of, that really kind of puts everything in the same exactly. vibe, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, you got the guy with the bass is like, oh, then it can go into, like, a yeah. fucking thing. And you're like, no, dude, like, it's just got to be, like, just simple, yeah. you know. Like, <laughs> well, that's kind of one of my things, too, is, like, a lot, a lot of simple things mm-hmm. built up. Exactly. And a lot of my favorite producers, that's how they operate. You know, particularly like Dr. Dre is like the master of that, but and then in the rock world as well, you know, some of the best kids, like that was, you know, we still listen to Pink Floyd all the time, right? Like everybody loves Pink Floyd, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they're also kind of the masters of like space. And obviously those guys like can play like David Gilmore can fucking wail, but there's also a lot of like nothing happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's a ton of space and it'll just be like one great sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that kind of is lacking from today's music. And that's just, for me, that's just a fun way to do it, too. So I'm not like a, I don't suck at stuff, but I'm not like a virtuoso like guitarist where I'm like shredding. Like I can solo and stuff, but I'm not like doing crazy shit. Like to me, it's all about just trying to like write songs. Mm-hmm. So all of that is like, what do I need to do to write the song? So like that's kind of as far as the skills have gotten. <laughs> Does yeah. that make sense? You know, yeah, yeah. like I never cared about being like the next like shred guitar virtuoso or something. Or, yeah, <laughs> like no, that that never really interests me a whole lot. You know, I'm way more interested in like melody, and, mm-hmm. like what's this song actually doing, or like or albums. I, I still love the album format, but I don't get to work in it as much. But you know, like a whole album that's like a, a statement of a lot of things. You mm-hmm. know, that it's like here's the thing with great artwork mm-hmm. and, and all that kind of stuff. So. Now, how would you, I don't mean to cut you off if you had any more thoughts. No, go, no. Like Metallica, they always had, you know, two heavy songs, and then, yeah, yeah, the, the ballad, or yes, the, you know, yeah, and then sure. it's back to the, yeah. Do you try and mix in, like, different stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, 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 that's kind of the great thing about the album format, is that that allows you to do that. So you get to have ups and downs and kind of take a turn over here okay. and then come back and everything. But it still kind of has like 
a core sound of the thread. You know, like I say, yeah. Metallica always kind of sounds like Metallica no matter what. But if it's just a single, it's kind of like, well, the single needs to be like a banger, mm -hmm. you know, or something, or like this has to be like a, a beat or, or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But like with an album, it, it gives you the, it's just like a movie. You know, you got to have like slower sections and then you yeah, have like action sequences. Metallica they would have at the end of the song, you know, maybe yeah. more damage incorporation yeah yeah crazy interludes and like yeah. things that like tie an album together as like a cohesive piece of art mm -hmm. and i still love that too i mean there's still great bands that are making great full-length albums there's some guys like mastodon they're like we do we're an album band you know but yeah. you know unfortunately though too it's like it's avatar avatar yeah. the band yeah uh i don't know that i know that i feel like maybe i've heard a couple songs are they from South America or something? Yeah, from uh, Sweden. Or okay. Sweden, you know, okay. Yeah. I love a lot of Swedish. That would make sense. I don't love a lot of American metal. Yeah. Um, a lot of it's just too like. Well, yeah. kind of part of it too is it never goes anywhere else. Like what we were just talking about. So it's like something's only heavy when it's next to something that's not. You know, there there's like got to be like contrast. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you're just that. 100% the whole time and it's just blast beats the whole time and some dude screaming the whole time mm -hmm. it's like this is not interesting and it's not even actually heavy to me because it doesn't even have impact mm -hmm. you know uh -huh. that you need so so like that's why I saw you ever heard of Opus you know Opus yeah, yeah. they're a Swedish band they're probably one of the biggest Swedish metal bands of the last 20 years or 30 mm -hmm. years or something but you know that's their whole shtick I mean they do go all over the place and so yeah. like when it's heavy it's heavy, but it's also interesting. Yeah. And I feel like that's not real. It's just like it's like missing in American metal yeah. a little bit, you know. Sleep token, man. I'm a sleep token fucking uh, dick rider. You, you up on those guys and all? Never even heard of them. Yeah. So they're English. Um, they really blew up this last year, okay. 2023. They're on, this is like their third album, technically, or something. But I mean, it like fucking exploded. Like they're like the thing. Yeah. Like top... It was like the number one streamed metal, metal album. Mm. And like, but this is what I keep joking about with those guys. It's like 70% of that album is like pop music with like yeah. metal sprinkled in. Yeah. And it's like, well, this is why everybody loves it. Yeah. Because, you know, like it's not just fucking like metal the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But it's also super dark. Um, okay. Dude's a good singer. Uh, got great lyrics and shit. So yeah. it's just, they're, they're doing the whole like, uh, wearing a mask, okay, fucking thing, whatever you know, like Slipknot or whatever, uh, anonymous, you know, like yeah. all black, you know, like whatever. But then they do this stuff that's like literally like electronic based pop music, like the drummer's just playing like on like pads, you know, yeah. on his kit, and it's all keyboards and everything. Yeah. And it's like it's that for like four minutes of the song. Mm -hmm. Then there's like. A thirty-second metal part, <laughs> and everyone's like, "Yeah, they're the best metal band out there." I'm like, "Well, how is this even actually metal? Because there's only like parts of it." But yeah. and I don't care. I don't care about genre at all. It's just got to be sweet and you know, it's, it's yeah. like Sleep Token's fucking sweet. Dude. All right, I'll check them out. Yeah. I like it anyway. Sleep Token. Yeah. Hmm. So that's one of the only I would say like new, new, new acts. I'm probably missing the boat on some shit. I try to stay up on shit. I, you know, I pay check attention. Out to check I, out Avatar. I was really impressed just with their yeah. Let's See and Adopt intersection. Oh, sweet. Their uh, live show, which is, holy yeah. cow, it was, yeah. it was a hell of a live show. Yeah. You don't usually see that anymore, a lot of things do. It's, mm -hmm. When you do see bands, it's just usually... Yeah, it's either one or the other. It's either like it's because touring's so goddamn expensive and everything. You got you have to be almost like a legacy act already mm -hmm. to uh, to have the kind of money to like put on like a real show, like an you know a metal show or an arena show or whatever. And it's, so it's either like all or nothing, you know. Like uh, I was just hearing this one kind of famous guitar. He played in Guns N' Roses for a while. He's played in a lot of bands. This dude. Called Bumblefoot. Have you ever heard of this guy? Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's like a shred guitarist. But anyway, the point is, as he was saying, he's like, musicians now we're just traveling t-shirt salesmen. It's like, yeah. He's like, that's all we are. We don't make any money from music. It's yeah. just selling merch is 
the only thing that actually supports the bands. Really? That's yeah. crazy. And that's with the death of the CD model, the record model. So it's yeah. like, you can say whatever you want about that, you know, or whatever, but like, that's how musicians actually made a living. And it's also like gutted like the middle class out of music. Like I'm saying, you're either like yeah. at the very bottom or you're at the very top kind of, you know, like, and I mean, even the middle class of like, not just the bands, but people who work in studios and uh, road crew, you know, and like this mm -hmm. kind of stuff that was like these support jobs mm -hmm. that came with these bands, like just kind of like isn't really there anymore. And I mean, I know producers and mixers and shit that are, are older than me and that started back in this and were doing really well. And they were like, you know, we had this whole thing where you thought that you'd be making royalties off of CD sales basically the rest of your life. Like, what you do is you build up a catalog, and those records continue to sell, hopefully, you know, and you, you know, that's kind of your retirement plan or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that just went away. Yeah. So it's like, well, now what the fuck? Because nobody buys albums anymore. So, like, that's why so many, like, producers and shit are, like, they make more money doing... Uh, YouTube video, like educational content, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, than they actually do making actual records. Yeah, yeah. You know, which is, and I, I love that stuff and I'm all for that, but this is kind of crazy to think about, you know, that like yeah. the music business, I mean, it was only not that long ago, it's like these guys were just making millions of dollars, you know, if you made it, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Motley Crue or Metallica or Guns N' Roses or some of these bands that were just sold millions of albums and shit and then touring too. Yeah. And then because, sorry, I'm really going off here, but the, uh, <laughs> then because record companies aren't making any money, so now they're start to dip into that merch stuff. So that's why you saw concert t-shirts go from like 20 bucks, yeah. you know, back in the day to now they're 50, 60 bucks, yeah. whatever. The venue's taking a cut, you know, like all this stuff is just like, yeah. because that's the only place there is money. So now it's like, yeah, now the venue's dipping in, and now the record company, and it's like, well, what do you guys even actually do anymore? Like, what is even a record company anymore? They're more like a marketing yeah. arm than, like, you know, it used to be more of like a, it was that too, but more like, almost like a bank where they would, like, loan you money to make a record or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, that was kind of the model. And now it's like, you don't give a shit about the record, you know, like, anybody can make that. I'm making records in my house, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, like, anybody can kind of do that and, like, just got to try to sell it and then sell, basically, merch and streams, you know, YouTube views and whatever, yeah. you know. I don't know. Music yeah. business is weird, dude. I see you had a lot of views on some of the, like, you're just showing what... Yeah, I got a few minutes. I want to do more of this kind of stuff for, for some of these reasons. First of all, it's super fun. Um... I got a couple of videos where I did like a, uh, what, the one is the drum set probably is the one you saw. I got a new drum set, bought kind of a dream kit a couple yeah, years yeah, ago yeah. and kind of like set that up, um, on camera basically and talked about it and shit. And then a few others that are like, uh, I like to play with microphones. So I'll do a lot of like shootouts, which, um, I just did one cause it was like, I'm going to do this anyway mm -hmm. because I'm going to start something new and like. I want to know what mic I should be using for yep. myself. So I'm like, I'm just going to tape this anyway. And hopefully, because I watch that shit all the time yeah. because I'm bored, yeah, you yeah. know? So if I'm watching something on YouTube, it's usually like... Or you want to try you know? your interest in trying this yeah. or that. And yep. like, oh, sorry. Well, you can at least get an idea mm -hmm. before you spend your money, exactly. you know? Because it, it is hard to like microphones. Like, like That's where I would did you were doing that because then you might even get some sponsors to just start giving you free shit. Yeah, you I'm, go, well, oh, yeah. Hey, now I got right, right, right. I'm right. gonna blow money on. Yeah, you got to get some serious views to get into that territory. But I mean, it's certainly uh, he, he, he's right, you know? Yeah, yeah you I mean, it, it just kind of depends. But I mean, usually, like when you start getting into that like ten thousand subscriber areas, when you start, and I'm not anywhere even remotely close to that, you know, I'm, and I'm not doing like a YouTube channel, you know, I'm fucking around with the podcast and putting up random videos when I want and stuff. I'm not like trying to like consistently like build a channel. That's yeah. like, that's what this is, yeah. which would be fun. I'd like to do that, but so many good ideas, not enough time. Yeah. You know? But yeah. Yeah, man. I had friends that were uh, all up on you. 
YouTube early on. I'm like, damn, I wish I would have. You yeah. know, like I wasn't really hip to it. I was like, what? I thought it was spelled with a U, like you, like yeah. iTunes or whatever, but like YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like, I don't know. I don't understand what this is. And, yeah. <laughs> so what do you what do you norm, your normal job is then? Or uh, I do like graphic design oh. and uh, marketing websites oh, okay. that kind of stuff so yeah I work for a local company here so okay. doing that kind of stuff which is all again kind of now, everything you do your some of your own like covers when you're doing albums and oh stuff, yeah like, oh so yeah you did all that album. not not all of it so like some stuff like uh my wife did some of the records for the prog rock band she did that stuff okay um but then i would do like would she come up with that for you huh would she have you looking up for that Oh, that's so. She's a painter, so that was like surrealist painting, like weird shit, you know. One of them I kind of gave her an idea, and then she did it. And then another one was just a, a piece she already had that I loved, and just used it for the. Um, so th that depends on the project too. So like, like the stuff I'm doing now that's like industrial or whatever. It's called Long After Midnight, and I do most of that artwork because that's a little more my style, which is more like photographic. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of, like, layering of photos and, like, really grungy, like, weird kind of shit like that. And then, you know, text layout and that kind of stuff. So it depends on the project with that, too. So, like, the, the art really has to, like, match the music, you know, like, yeah, what yeah, you're trying yeah, to present. Yeah. You know? So, but, yeah, absolutely. And I do... Have you ever seen the, uh, I forget if it was a documentary or where I've seen it, but it was talking about, like, who came up with all the album covers back in the seventies and eighties? Yeah, uh, the hypnosis dudes. It was that was the guy that did all the Pink Floyd shit yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, their company was called Hypnosis. Okay, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was a big fan of those dudes. I mean, every, not like you know they were it's doing it long before I was born, you know. But like uh, those guys are legends, man. So they're yeah, yeah. just some of the simplest stuff. And it's so and iconic, also, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's, Crazy stuff too, yeah. but it's it's crazy that they were like kind of the first like company that kind of like was like we we're just gonna do record covers. So they kind of fell into this niche, yeah. Other than being able to do like no no we just do album artwork, you know. Yeah. And I mean like fuck dude that don't exist no more either. No, you know no. what I mean? But I do a lot of that stuff. I've done uh, record covers for other stuff for other bands and whatever. Um, and in particular like lyric videos. You know, you know what a lyric video is? Mm -hmm. It's just like a presentation of a song that has the lyrics, oh, and usually okay, the yeah. lyrics are animated okay. or something, and there's art and oh, whatever, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. video effects or whatever. Um, it's, it's just like another way of putting out a video, you know, for YouTube or whatever. Mm -hmm. So so I do a lot of those. And that's, so that's a little bit, I guess, of a side hustle. But yeah. I've done probably 60 of those for... Every genre, dude, like everybody, pe people all over the world, you know. Really? So it's fun. I like doing that because it's kind of like you get to collaborate. Now, is that on your side or is that through your where you're working? No, that's all me. That's my thing. That's okay. one of my things. That that's just a bit of a side hustle. So it ain't you know like paying the bills or nothing, you know. But it's yeah, again, just a side hustle. You just get flat fee, not It depends. It depends on like what what it is, you know. Like I've done a few rap things. It's like listen, there's a lot of words here, boys. You know, this is gonna yeah. be more expensive than you know like something that's simple or. And it depends on what they want. If it's like, are we just doing something really simple, or do you want like is it a full like movie with like you know film and it's a you know like I mean you can go deep on that stuff you know and am i making something or am i using stock footage or you know like how in depth do you want stuff to be so yeah. so yeah it's usually some kind of flat fee but it's like it's very dependent on like what is what the scope of this yeah. is gonna be you like know? let me hear the song yeah first. oh yeah i get like, you know. oh, yeah, that's a yeah. and most of the time like They've seen what I've done now, so it's kind of like they kind of get like, oh, I, I dig this kind of vibe of the way you do it or whatever. And so then it's like, yeah, you know, we can kind of do like this one that's kind of the cheaper end. This is kind of more in the middle. And this is like one of the really expensive ones. You yeah. Know? Like, so. Now, how do they find you for that? Uh, online, usually, or word of mouth. Uh, I had a website going. I don't know if the website's even still up. It was like lyricvideomaster.com. Oh. Lyricvideomaster.com. See if it's even still up. <laughs> uh, something like that. I'd advertise for a while. I was doing more of it. I would like throw off some ads on uh, Facebook and shit or something okay. like that. Or just, you know. But again, like, you know, I'm not doing those all the time. It's just kind of like a small, small yeah. thing just to 
something to do that again makes you a little money on the yeah. side, so it's cool. Yeah. But if anybody needs anything, holla at your boy. <laughs> Actually, just wrapped up one. It was uh, it's like kind of like won a bunch of like awards that all these uh, they're like film festivals, but they also have like a best song kind of category mm -hmm. and stuff. So. And like I just did the video, and uh, the person that's in charge of it, she's putting them out in these film festivals, and they're like winning. It's like winning all of them, which is wow. kind of cool. So yeah, that's, yeah, so cool. that's fun. But you know that stuff is all like I give the you know the videos for them. They put it out on their channel or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? So which is also kind of hard too because like it's hard to show people sometimes because like that stuff can go down or whatever. You know, and I'll be yeah. like. Ah, that video doesn't exist anymore. And then, like, I put it on my channel, and then they get mad at me. And I'm like, well, it's just like I'm trying to just show people what I do. Yeah. I don't really know how to do that, you know. Wow. That's why I made up the website actually to kind of have like a portfolio. Yeah, on yeah. There. Yeah, yeah so come up oh, missing. They gotta. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit. You know? <laughs> nah, that's fun, man. But yeah, I love like just collaborating with anybody in any way that I can be helpful, mm -hmm. you know. Have you ever uh, dabbled, tried to do any AI stuff? Uh, yeah, of course I've tried, tried AI stuff, I mean it's... For artwork wise or well, whatever you want to, I don't know. Yeah, I mean mostly it'd be, you know, art and writing and whatever, I mean like I've, I've looked at it, I, I'm an AI hater, okay. you know. I mean it literally is like a threat to my actual job, yeah, yeah. so you know, that's very real. <laughs> Um, I also, I don't know, there's that which sucks, there's sort of like, in my view, I don't know, a philosophical thing that I think a lot of people share, of like, well this is, I don't, it's not art if a human didn't make it, you know, like a machine can never make something so weird, you know, mm -hmm. like, I don't it can copy things, which is that's all it's doing, you know, mm -hmm. but it's like, there can't ever be like, somebody so original, you know, like Kurt Cobain or something, that there's that, these weird specific set of cir circumstances make this person, you know, mm -hmm. all his childhood and pain and, you know, all of our traumas and everything mm -hmm. that, like, become what we are as an artist, you know, a machine can't do that. Yeah. And then also, frankly, right now, I think a lot of it just kind of sucks. There's a lot of it that is cool, like some of the higher end ones or whatever, that, that would be like, oh, that's, that's pretty sick image, you know, but like a lot of stuff, dude, I'll be like, I'll ask it to do something and like, I'll just kind of be like, not that impressed, you know, so, and I'm sure it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. So like for what I do, I've fucked around with like, okay, just kind of trying it out. Like, okay, make me a logo for this or something. Mm -hmm. See what it comes back with. Maybe you'll get some ideas. What do you use for your art AI? Uh, well, I don't really have a go-to because I don't really do it that much. So I've experimented with, like, I, I don't even remember all of them, but Dolly, I think, was one of the big ones. Right. So it's all being integrated into, like, all the software now. So, like, Adobe, which is, like, the platform I do all my graphic design shit in, mm -hmm. is, like, you know, they have their own AI now integrated. Oh, do they? It's going to be everywhere, you know? So there's, you know, it's like, well, do your AI right here in Adobe, you know? And they'll do their thing or whatever. So, I've, of course, I've messed with that, you know? Like, they... they Put out beta versions of their stuff and I'll download it and mess around you yeah. know but and I'll try to be like and some of it's just like oh this well, all of it honestly so far as well like this is not usable yeah, yeah for me maybe I'm not doing it really I don't know dude I just don't care that much either yeah. and so so far for me to get the results that I want I still have to like do it yeah you know we'll see it is what it is I can't I can't stop it I wish it didn't exist but there's nothing I can do about it that genie's not going back and I mean, there's like, it's like, where do you draw the line too? Because like, I use stock mm -hmm. images and stock graphics and mm -hmm. stuff all the time. I didn't make that, mm -hmm. but I guess another person made that and they are getting paid for that. I mean, if now, you, don't you look at it still, you have, you, a human, have, have to, to put the information in. And, and pick the ones that you want. The one. Yeah. So. I mean, with what I do, I don't know, with the thing of like, I don't like this whole like, you're an AI engineer. You like have you heard about that? Where it's like yeah. the way you prompt the AI, yeah. and they're even like offering like college programs in this shit now yeah. and stuff. And I'm just like, this is not a skill. Like yeah. to me, I'm just like, this is like the dumbest thing. Like this isn't a real skill. You know, that's how I feel about it. But I'm somebody that like that knows how to do some stuff. So like, of course, I'm probably gonna be kind of salty about it because it's like. Yeah. 
you got a lot of idiots who are now like, you know, can like, oh, I can do your logo with AI for you for yeah. next to nothing, yeah, yeah. you know, or something. So that part of it sucks, you know. It, it, but it's like, yeah, you can have AI make a new Drake song, mm -hmm. but you can't like have the new Drake. You know what I mean? Like the next person or like, yeah. it can only copy what already exists. Mm -hmm. So, and you know. That's what the whole, like, a lot of that Hollywood strike shit was about. You know, like, using actors and actresses' like, uh, likenesses in... Or background people. Back, that was another big one. Like, yeah, you sign... What was it, dude? You sign something, and it says, like, we can use your likeness from here on out forever, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, well, wait a minute. Like, no. Dude, I think that's the greatest job in the world. To be a background actor. <laughs> I watched the old documentary on that shit. They interviewed, like, you know, some people are like, I've been doing this for 35 years, and they show all these clips of all these famous movies, and it's just like, bing, pieces yeah. in the background, you know? Like, <laughs> what a job, dude. So, where are you going next? Just working on some albums? Yeah, man. Um, so, right now, I'm working on a new album for Long After Midnight. That's what I'm... And that's like an industrial rock thing. Um, industrial rock pop kind of thing. I don't know. Nine Inch Nails. If you're into Nine Inch Nails, that'd be up your alley. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working on that now. Um, I'm, all the music's done and some of the vocals are done to a few of the songs. So kind of chipping away at the vocals on you that. Uh, yeah, that's a whole other subject, dude. Um, I was going to say, that's kind of like cheating a little bit, too. Well, but here's the thing about that, is that it is on everything. I was actually just talking to a mixer buddy about this online, is that, so, I would like to not use AutoTune, yeah. basically. Yeah. And there's other tuning software, too, now, but AutoTune is kind of the, the thing, right? But we are all so accustomed to hearing everything be so perfectly tuned, mm -hmm that when you put something out that doesn't have that, people think that it sucks or that you're not any good. Yeah. And when in reality, you might be a better singer than most of these people, yeah. but they're all tuning their stuff so to death mm -hmm. that, so you, you kind of get pushed into this box of like not really having a choice. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I get everything, I, I do the best I can. And then, um, and I've put out a lot of stuff without auto-tune, but um, now I'm kind of thinking, like, based on what I just said there, that, like, I kind of don't really have a choice anymore, but, so, but, so it, it'll be very lightly, let's say, very lightly tuned, mm -hmm. you know, so, to kind of give it that, like, polished sound that we all hear on every single record. I mean, like, talking, like, the best singers in the world, guys like Sam Smith or Justin Timberlake or, you know, these top-tier pop guys that, you know, do yeah. all this stuff, you know. Like that, they're yeah, they're tuning all that shit, and it's like, why? And it's probably a lot of these same reasons that I just said. Like it's you have to, mm -hmm. like you said, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you that's kind of where I'm at. Like that, I, I I wish that didn't exist. And then again, that's like a slippery slope too. It's like, well, you could make that same argument about even being able to edit music. Like, well, that's not a musical performance if you put two or three takes together, two or three takes together, two or three takes together. Yeah. Yeah. Same argument in a way, right? Yeah. I got no problem with that. That's what I'm doing for everything. Or, you know, backing it up even before that for editing when it was uh, editing on tape. Mm -hmm. that, can, you imagine, can you, real quick, can you imagine all doing that shit? Dude. Reel to reel. Running tape machines and shit? I, I, I wouldn't even Crazy. want to do it. No. I'd be like, ah. Yeah. 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 So what I was going to say is there, there was an argument then when tape basically came out in the, like the early 50s or whatever, 40s or whatever, of like just being able to cut the tape and put two pieces of tape together. Yeah. All the musicians were like, oh, that's bullshit. You know, yeah, like yeah. I got to, you know, like I'm doing the whole thing. Like, he didn't play the <laughs> solo. Yeah. Know? So there's a slippery slope thing of like, where, where do you draw the line mm -hmm. of what that is? But there's this whole like nostalgia now for tape machines and tape does have a sound. Mm -hmm. It's got like oh, yeah. the yeah. drum sound and shit. It sounds great. Right. But mm -hmm. a lot of these old school producers that grew up working on tape, some okay. of these guys like Bob Clear Mountain or you know, these fucking ridiculous producers who made all your favorite records in the seventies yeah. and eighties and everything. They're like, 
there's this nostalgia for tape, mm -hmm. but they're also like, that shit sucked, dude. Like what we have now is so much easier. And so, you know, they're like, so like, you know, kids are like, well, let's do it on tape. And they're like, dude, tape's a pain in the ass, dude. <laughs> like, but it does have a sound. So what they all do now is they uh, record, you know, like into Pro Tools into the computer or whatever. And then they run that out onto tape and basically like bounce that sound onto tape and that gives it that tape sound. And then they run that back in to the software. So like these studios that have tape machines, like a lot of them will have like a tape machine in their corner and it's basically just kind of like almost like an outboard effect almost. Yeah. So like, yeah. well, we want that, you know, I love the sound of tape or whatever, but you can edit your performance and everything on the computer, okay. run it back through tape okay. and then dump it back. And then you don't have to like save the tape either necessarily because you can, so you can use like, one roll of tape a bunch of times. I'm not an expert on that. Yeah. How many times you get, you know, yeah. before the tape's worn out or something. Because yeah. you don't have to, like, keep the tape, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. so, I don't know. That shit fascinates me, but I've never done it. I've never worked on a tape machine. Yeah. yeah. I remember when you recorded on Pro Tools and they are yeah. like, no, you're, that's not really recording. Exactly. I'm that's like, what I'm saying. Where's the you don't, you don't, there's not yeah. a person that isn't using. 100%, yeah. Some kind of computer and there was all that iterim like stuff, the like uh, ADAT machines, and you know different versions of tape, or like mini disc was one of the yeah, first. I had yeah, a mini yeah. disc thing that were like these like that. they were about the size of floppy disks, yeah. and they, it was kind of like a, a floppy disk thing, but it was like a digital recording device that you mm -hmm. like pop into your mixer. We had one of those. It was like an eight channel yeah. or sixteen channel or something, yeah, yeah. you know, like. People actually use those old things too for exactly what I just explained, but instead of running it to an old, like reel to reel tape machine, like a full size tape machine, they'll use like an old cassette tape machine yeah. to get that sort of cassette tape sound, you know? Especially if you're doing like hip hop or lo fi and you can like crush the shit out of drums and stuff, yeah. like compressing stuff or whatever to get that like crazy blossom sound or whatever, you know, like lo fi or like crunchy you know or whatever so mm -hmm. people are so creative on that shit but it is kind of like cool that like people are still like interested in that tape kind of sound and to like do yeah. these weird things you know but it seems like everybody i talk to is like no fuck ai and it's like well but then we're all using it too and it's like you know like the t-pain auto-tune sound yeah. that like crazy robot sound that's basically like auto-tune cranked all the way up and that's why it has this crazy robot sound yeah. to it um, so See, that's what I'm saying right there. I, 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 I a famous artist. I, I think Cher was one. Of them. Yeah, yeah. The Do you believe yeah. in? Yeah. I would yeah. say, oh, that's cool. Where like yeah. a famous person use a digital thing that's not normally. Uh huh. You know, just what made I'm it. Yeah, made it be like, like oh, that's just so cool. I don't right. care that I'm, now I'm using this AI right, program right, right. To yeah to do this. But most of the time, it's used. You know, trying to be transparent with it and so you're trying to tune the vocal so you don't really hear yeah. the robot effect yeah. you know so that's why I like see saying, I think that's then cheating that's I yeah, say if is. you're gonna do it, it be share T-Pain yeah you know fair enough yeah that's, so then yeah. you're not fooling anyone you just have to create something right yeah. yeah 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 and I mean there's a lot I mean I hear it everywhere. like once you like know what it sounds like kind of like your ears are trained enough to I mean we all know that T-Pain auto-tune song, but even just like a more transparent version of it, like, I mean, I hear it just like crazy. Yeah, you know? yeah. But, but you can go in and you can do it manually too. So it'll like, you like play it through and it'll kind of like show you kind of like the notes and then you can like move stuff. So like if you wanted to kind of yeah, like... That's what I was, I, I played with the program when it first, but then I was like, yeah. I didn't really want to use it because I thought yeah. it was cheating. Yeah. It so is, and I, I agree. <laughs> so I've yeah. never really got more involved in right. just yeah. opening up and playing around with it. So I'm like, oh, man, I got a million dollars to do that. Yeah. And I kind of hate, like, for myself, like, you know, listening to your own singing can be hard sometimes, you know, like, because you, you beat yourself up so much worse. And, like, so I try to, like, now when I can, and, and again, I haven't really been, but my kind of plan is is to, like, whoever's going to mix this stuff, which isn't going to be me, mm -hmm. I'm going to have them do whatever tuning they think is necessary. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's like, if this sounds great without it, 
leave it. I'll, I'm going to let you decide. Like, I kind of don't even want to know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. tune it, tune everything if you need to. Do it, do whatever you need to, you know? Like, and uh, that's kind of where I'm going to land with it, I think, <laughs> you know? Now, when, when you do, because what I would do with vocals, or come up with vocals, and I, I have the song created, and then I just kind of like mumble and create a, whatever yep. words can come out of that. Yes, that's how I do it. Is that how you yeah, do it? Yeah, there's, there's a couple, you know, people do it different ways. Some people will write lyrics first, yeah. or, you know, be given lyrics or have a thing. Now, that's help. nice, too. I, I like that that way, too. But that, I, can be, that can be fun, because that can force you into kind of doing something you wouldn't normally do. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, just like everything, like, we kind of have melodies and patterns that we lean toward. Mm-hmm. So it might be kind of like a comfortable go-to thing that you start doing on every song. You know, yeah. we're all kind of guilty of that, yeah. you know, like singers and whatever. But like, so having like lyrics that don't have a melody given to you, now you got to kind of like find the melody where these lyrics can put you in a, a position to make you come up with something new. Yeah. Uh, but generally speaking, that's precisely my thing is uh, I try to just react to a song. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, my favorite thing is when I'm not writing the song and I'm given music mm-hmm. as a singer. Mm-hmm. To be able to just, and I don't even like, I put it in the system on my computer and have my microphone on and everything, like before I even listen to it, like the first time I hear it, mm-hmm. I want to be able to react to it. Okay. That's an ideal situation okay, when you yeah. can do that. So I'll have it on and I'll literally like hit play and I'll just start and record, obviously, you know, just, but yeah, I'll just react to it. Yeah, and yeah. it's just nonsense, yeah. kind of quasi words you know, mm-hmm. like syllables and yeah. stuff. And then a lot of the time that you'll kind of say a word or a bit of a phrase or it'll kind of sound like it's a phrase. Yeah. And then you'll be like, oh, well, maybe that's kind of like part of a hook. Yeah. And then so like, okay, so I kind of like landed on that or that syllable kind of works. So maybe that's where the rhyme is. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of just start building on that a little bit. And then generally the way I do it is, is I'll kind of get that to a certain point. Mm-hmm. depending on who I'm working with, I'll send that off to them and be like, this cool, are you okay with these kind of parts or whatever? Mm-hmm. Uh, get any feedback I need to get on that kind of stuff and then kind of take that away and then write lyrics then to those that I know that this is the melody so the syllables are kind of got to be like this or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm kind of adding more words and then you can kind of massage the melody. You know, it's all just whatever. But that's my preferred way to write stuff and like you know I'm pre- I've am i been writing lyrics so long that I'm very good at it if I can say <laughs> because it's a skill I've just it been is. doing it since literally like the third grade it is, yeah. and I mean so like I'm very good at being able to be like well this kind of genre kind of has this style of lyric and I know how to write within this style of lyric or mm-hmm. you know or if it's going to be Maybe if it feels a pop song, or like if somebody asked me to write a country song, I don't love country, but I, I've dabbled in a couple. I, but it was like if we were gonna sit down and be like, no, we're writing a country song, like I know that I can be there in that kind of space and know that like what kind of lyrics are sort of acceptable in Drugs. this kind of yeah. Drugs, <laughs> girls, and guns, baby. Yeah. But but it's the same for like you know it's the same for all genres in a way you know like you can do whatever you want and i try to not worry about it but you know if it's industrial yeah it's going to be something that is sort of in a nine inch nails you know mm-hmm. dark gothy something you know what i mean like or you know if it's going to be a justin timberlake song it's might be it's going to be a love song that's what all that stuff is you know yeah. what i mean so like yeah. i can kind of put myself in these not real it's yeah. not like that you know a lot of <clears throat> A lot of singers and lyricists will bullshit you that everything they're writing is some sort of deep from the heart personal thing. (laughs) And they're just trying to sell you a thing. Honestly, I think that's bullshit. I think most of it's just like a skill. Things have to rhyme. Things have to line up. There's certain words that work great. There's certain words that are singable. I mean, like how many times has girl and world be rhymed? Yeah. been rhymed in songs you Crazy know like baby yeah, you know what i mean there's this all this is stuff it's like okay not everything is like you know like this is honestly that's right i get impressed 
songs that don't have much rhyme. Yeah, yeah. I'm a rhymer too, and I, I maybe I'm a little bit too rhymey rhyme mm -hmm. on stuff, and I need to like be more like just straight like. I was getting to where Eminem style. Well, yeah, that's kind of another thing. Like if we're talking mm -hmm. about like rap lyrics, where you're like rhyming within lines. Yeah. Actually, weirdly throwing it back all the way around to Sleep Token, a lot of that like kind of pop stuff he mm -hmm. does is actually sort of like that. Where there's like it's kind of like hip hoppy, mm -hmm. and he has these rhymes that are kind of like a little bit different than just you know, or more like stuff that's on the inside of lines mm -hmm. as well yeah, yeah. and shit like that. So I mean, that kind of stuff is super fun. But yeah, I'm always kind of rhyming like everything on the end of lines. <laughs> I mean, rhymes can can hinder you in that way because you're stuck with it has to rhyme. Yeah. Where like there might be a better word. That you want to use for what you're actually trying to say or it's just a great word you know like i just like sometimes it'll just be like oh that's just a great word you yeah. know yeah. uh so i think a lot of the time when it doesn't rhyme it usually might start more from just like a lyric first or like you know and a lot of guys will have like oh i just write you know like free form writing at night and then when it's time to like write the lyrics to the song i have like a lot of like lines that are just like I can just kind of pick from yeah. or again like words that inspire you like I'll do I mean they teach you this in creative writing I mean I took all kinds of creative writing classes it's like you know word farming where like just take a dictionary mm -hmm. and just go through and just again find cool words and just write down those words or again like if you're trying to write like a goth rock song maybe you're finding words that you feel yeah. fit that and now that gives you a sort of like word soup to start with yeah. you know like interesting words that will inspire you to write something you in this feeling yeah exactly that's what i was saying with yeah. like how do you create the lyrics and yeah it's, and mine, it's, mine are all it's for to me it's just writing it's writing to the melody that i basically already came up with and so that means it basically has to fit a certain amount of syllables and generally a certain rhyme scheme and you know like whatever the lines are if it's you know four lines in a verse or eight or 16 or 10 or however mm -hmm. you know or what's the pre-chorus or whatever so that's it but but i will do all that stuff for the actual lyrics it'll be like i mean forever i kept even just recently i just retired the real dictionary basically and kind of just started using my phone but i mean i had a dictionary that had in it a dictionary and it had a rhyme dictionary mm -hmm. and it had a couple other dictionaries like a medical dictionary which mm -hmm. i didn't use a lot but I mean, that thing, dude, since I was in the fifth grade or something, that's how I was doing these things. It's just like going through there and getting like finding stuff. Or you can do it with, uh, it doesn't have to be a dictionary. You can use uh, books, like novels yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Like I've done tons of that. Um, I'm always inspired by whatever I'm reading. So whatever I'm reading generally it would become, so there's a lot of songs that have been basically the lord of the rings you know like you know what i mean like lord of the rings. constantly like it doesn't matter lately uh when i was writing some of the songs i just recorded i was reading this red rising series which and uh so a lot of it was kind of like you know my head was in that space so mm -hmm. you can do a lot of those things free form writing again like before you're uh maybe when you're like in bed but you're not asleep or whatever you know just like mm -hmm. uh just just write, you know, and don't worry about whatever you're writing or whatever, like doing stuff like that. Just to kind of come, because when you write a lot of songs, it's hard to come up with lyrics sometimes because you've done it. You, you may have already, you feel like you're repeating yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's hard to kind of like keep coming up with new stuff. So you have to like do these exercises to put yourself in a position where you can come up with something new. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So like none of this stuff is like, other people people will think like young songwriters maybe or potentially or something will think like that that kind of thing is cheating or something because again yeah. there's not like there's this perception where it's like oh this is deep from the heart yeah, yeah. i wrote it you know like but it's like no one's like yeah after you do so much you can't have that much coming out of yeah. your damn heart I'm yeah like, exactly yeah. it's just like dude there's it's not that much going on in here you unless, know what i mean unless you're a taylor swift <laughs> Well, that's I mean the thing is like every song is the same thing, right? You know, and her songs, I'm not a Taylor Swift fan, no hate or whatever. I just I don't really know the music and the, but I saw something that was like a chart that was like 
eight of her songs that are the exact same chord progression even okay. and that's fine and again like no hey we all do the same shit and you know whatever it's just like kind of funny yeah. you know <laughs> it's like okay whatever so i mean I, I like a lot of pop and stuff i just don't really know her songs what i have heard i didn't love honestly she's a little annoying because she's everywhere you know what I mean? Like, there is that part of it. You know, it's like, I'm not even a fan. Why am I seeing this Don't person? Say you know what I mean. You're not going to give me this. <laughs> no, no, I no, love her everywhere. Yeah, indeed. I did see, I'll, I'll say, I did see this would kind of change my mind about that. Yeah. Of her being at the football games. Yeah. Because, you know, everyone's complaining yeah. about, oh, no, want to football in the Yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> but if you were like a dad, that now your little daughter. Is bonding with you if she's only seeing her you know, favorite uh, fan, for just, uh, you know, five, ten seconds or whatever. She wants know. to watch the game because uh, if that yeah. gets her involved, and now you're in a bonding situation. Sure, that's nothing wrong. With I that. mean, I don't watch football either, so I kind of just don't care. I, I <laughs> I'm a, I'm I a this don't, don't because care. You got to get all these subscriptions. So yeah, like, fuck yeah. that. I, I ditched regular cable for one a, a while back. I only have Netflix, uh, Amazon, which is mostly because Amazon Prime yep. for shopping. Yep. You know what I yeah, mean? But you get got, and then, it comes with it. Yeah, and then uh, I had HBO or whatever the fuck they call it now, Max HBO or whatever, Max, yeah. which annoys me that they changed their name to that. But uh, I was just I just canceled it because there's just not been shit on there, dude. And then like, yeah. but now. Uh, I'm a big Curb Your Enthusiasm fan, and they're doing the last season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, are they? Yeah. He's ending it on this season. Uh -oh. Then I'm like, fuck, now I'm going to have to get my subscription back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying also, dude, and I recommend this to everybody, is to try to, like, do something. You don't, that's, like, kind of like get a hobby. I'm trying not to spend all my time watching TV. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to make something, even if nobody's listening to it. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to do a podcast because it's fun and it's not yeah. me just sitting there doing nothing. At least I'm being creative. That's you know? what I like to do. Yeah, yeah man. That's this like, yeah. where I was like, okay, where I was doing the stand up, but yeah. What I added for that is take out all my jokes and just have my intro. And then <laughs> yeah, 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 which is hilarious. I don't see new videos. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. But the point is, though, is that you're you're doing stand-up so, comedy. You're doing we're fucking around with podcasts yeah, exactly. and shit. And whatever, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, like creating just yeah something for myself, and if someone else yeah. enjoys it, that's where I'm at too. And I mean, like you know, I, I'm well aware I'm never gonna be a rock star. I'm never, but it's like. I just, this is what I do, it's what I'm passionate about, and it's fun. I do it because it's fun. Mm -hmm. Like, this is more fun to me than watching a movie. And I love to watch a movie, too. I'm not saying don't ever, you know, but I'm saying if you just, like, put a little effort into, like, making your own thing, it doesn't matter what that is. When that thing's done, you like, you're like, wow, yeah. it's a thing that I made, you yeah. know? And, and, again, like, nobody is listening to my stuff or whatever, but I kind of just, at the point, I just don't care. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just going to do it because um, it's fun. I'm good at it. I'm passionate about it. Yeah. And, like, whatever, you know, if, if people catch it, you know, please, please do. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Dangerville Podcast. Yeah, yeah. So the, real quick before I bounce, is the, the Dangerville Podcast is my podcast with my best friend, Matt. Um, that, that's how we met. Uh, that's super fun. It's comedy, music. Um, it's sort of a variety show, like Joe Rogan ask or whatever, you know, but it's just, uh, it's just us fucking around, man. Yeah. So that's a blast. Uh, Long After Midnight is uh, probably my most current project. Is gonna be new that the fake comedy rap shit. If you're interested in hearing that, that's called Boss Danger. Boss Danger. Um, and it is, if I don't mind saying, I'm the greatest rapper that's ever lived. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes a man's just gotta say what he's gotta say. We be talking shit, and when I'm talking, you know I'm talking some shit. 
I'm so good, so everything I write is about how good I am. God damn, I am the man. There's no lacking in the tracking. The vocals I am attacking, and my knuckles are cracking. While I'm stacking the backing tracks, I'll be snacking and whacking my. <laughs> That's the whole shtick with that thing. It's like he thinks he's the greatest rapper. Well, the like, lyricist says, uh, <laughs> writing this as third grade. So Started yeah. writing my own songs in the third grade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Holloway was the name of my prog rock band. That was the band we did all the big shows with back in the day. Red ways still is kicked around sometimes or whatever but those are some of the big records so if you're into bands like Metallica and Opeth and Tool uh, that kind of thing that's what that was um, there's other projects too but those are probably the main thing oh yeah throw out Red Line Horizon too. solo thing that I do on and off that's kind of like more pop but it's just kind of me doing like songs really fast and like okay. it's kind of like research and development for other projects too a lot of it will be like I get a new toy like I was talking yeah. about and I gotta learn how to use it so I make a song with this okay. there's some great stuff with Red, on, Red Line Horizon there's some terrible songs <laughs> in there too uh, you can check out any of that stuff I hope you do if you want to work with me hit me up uh, I track bands I produce uh, mix if you need artwork, video, whatever the fuck. I'm your guy. Hit me up. Sounds like you are, bro. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Now, dude. can you these bands where you can find them on Apple or yeah, they're YouTube? everywhere, everywhere, dude. Oh, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, every, yeah, they're all everywhere. Your so. podcast, that's everywhere. Podcast too. is everywhere. Spotify. You want to listen to a podcast? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, cool, brother. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, and fuck you, man. And tell me all your secrets. I know, right? Thank you for inviting me. And I, I dig your place, man. It's super fun. Take the fucking video. <laughs> all right, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Peace. 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 Where did it come?